guys and welcome back to my channel. For today's video I am going to be looking over 2020 and I debated doing this video because I was like do I really want to look back on the year and do I really want to talk about it because it's not going to be all positives obviously but I suppose that's the same with any year but especially this year it's going to be a hard one and I thought you know what I'm just going to do it. I'm going to talk about some of the good things that came out of last year because there were good things and of course they're not so great things but I just wanted to do a little recap of my year, how I've been doing, some of the things that have happened and all of that kind of stuff. I made some notes but I haven't made a really strict plan. Basically I know I'm going to end up missing stuff out, I don't need to go through every single thing that happened as long as I include some of those you know important moments for you so yeah we're just gonna have a little chat I've not done a really chatty video like this for a while so we're gonna have a chat talk about some things that happened last year and just look back on the absolute mess that was 2020 and there's someone at the door that's very good timing this is gonna be a long video let's just start at the beginning of the year I'm gonna go through some of the best moments that happened this year and then talk about some overall favorites of the year maybe and just overall thoughts. January we started off strong. I had my new year's party at work, it was amazing, definitely had a bit too much to drink but that was a highlight of this year getting to spend time with like all of my favourite people and had such a good night. That is just one highlight of last year that I you know will hold on to. I also in January went to DragCon. I can't believe it's almost been a year since that happened. That was incredible everything i hoped for and more saw some amazing drag queens saw rupaul himself it was amazing and that was actually the last time i saw my sister anna we went together i went and stayed with her in london and we went there for the day together and then since then i have not seen her so <laughs> i've seen her over facetimes and zoom calls but i haven't seen her in person for a year which is really weird and really, really sad. And if I think about it too much, I get really upset. That is one of the many negatives to come out of 2020 is that I haven't seen her. Also towards the end of January to like the start of February, we went to Wales for the weekend. Stayed in this really nice house for the weekend. Went for some walks, played some games. It was so chilled, it was so lovely and a great way to start the year. And I'm very grateful for the fact we got that as a little getaway for the year, because of course, that was the only holiday I ended up having, which we'll talk about later on because there was obviously another holiday that was meant to happen this year that didn't. But that was such a lovely weekend and I'm so glad we got to do that before everything kicked off. Of course, had some time at work performing in CBB's Land Hotel. Amazing. I have the best job in the world. Never gonna stop talking about it. Also in February, I went to see the Jonas Brothers, which was my last concert before everything happened. It was incredible. I've wanted to see the Jonas Brothers since I was little, so that was like a dream and it was amazing. I got to go with my friend Stacey, we had the best time, we went to see them in Manchester and stayed over. It was so lovely and again, something that I'm very grateful got to happen before March. <laughs> because then March happened and, wow, that was a month. <laughs> of course, that was where we went into lockdown and I realised wow this is real this coronavirus is a real thing okay like this is serious <laughs> whoa um so spent a lot of time in lockdown trying to keep myself distracted which is basically 2020 summed up just distracting myself for the year from how i'm actually feeling and everything that's going on i ended up buying a switch after my birthday in may and that was one of the best purchases of the year that was the best purchase of the year. That has saved me from a lot. I know this sounds really dramatic, but again, with how I've been feeling, I needed my distractions and that switch is definitely one of those that has helped me so much. But yeah, March happened. We did a lot of Zoom quizzes. Everyone's gonna kind of have the same experience here. There was Zoom quizzes, clapping for the NHS on a Thursday night, generally trying to distract myself as much as possible because it was rough and I didn't deal with it so well. But also I know that I am in such a fortunate position that things could have gone a lot worse and there are people in a lot worse situations. And I know that's not really a helpful thing to say because you know, everybody goes through their own things and everyone is okay to struggle with whatever they're going through, it's all relative, but of course I know how lucky I actually am and I'm healthy, I'm in a good place, like actually in a good place, like living in a good place, I'm 
with family so I was never on my own for lockdown. I'm very lucky in the grand scheme of things of course but that doesn't mean I didn't struggle a lot in 2020. I also did a lot of online dance classes through the first lockdown which was really helpful for my mental health. That gave me more of a structure, gave me a little bit more of a routine because I knew at certain times a few days a week I'd be like okay so I'll do this in the morning and then at four o'clock I've got this class and then at five o'clock I've got this class and it just helped fix a routine in my head and it made the day go quicker almost because I knew that I had these things to do throughout the day and it just made it a lot easier. And don't get me wrong, I have enjoyed having more time to focus on myself and do what I want to do and you know, relax a bit more, you know, switch off. Not switch off mentally because that never happens, trust me, I've never been able to switch off my brain, but just relax and just do what I wanted to do as in like in the housewives, like watch what I want to watch, you know, play on my Switch. You know, I had a lot of time to do that kind of thing and that's been obviously nice, but also not great because it's been a bit much. But you know what I mean, I'm trying to look for all the positives as much as I can. But yeah, then the next few months, like from March to June, like to the end of June, that was all just a blur and it all kind of moulded into one. It's an emotional roller coaster, I'm not gonna lie to you. But then July happened and restrictions started to ease and I got to go back to work and it was just the best thing ever. I was so glad to be back at work, cannot even tell you. I remember going back and just wanting to cry. Obviously, it was very different when we went back. A lot of things had changed. The way we ran things had changed a lot. Everything was done as safely as possible and I just loved being there. It was amazing to be back. I got to see all my friends again. It was weird not it was weird seeing them for the first time in so long and not running and giving them a big hug. It was such a surreal experience seeing people for the first time again and it not being the same. It was really weird and I was like, oh my god, hi! And normally I'd just run and give them a hug but I was like, hi, um, okay. And that, that was, you know, it was weird. I've kind of got used to that now but I just want to hug people. I'm such an affectionate person. I just love hugs, so... I can't wait for the day I can hug all my friends again. Of course, as well in July, originally, I had some very exciting plans and I can't, I still can't talk about this too much because it still makes me really emotional and I know it's really stupid, but yeah, basically you will probably know if you remember me talking about it. I was meant to be going to Disney World in July. I was meant to be going on my dream holiday Everything that was planned for that holiday was exactly how I would have ever wanted it to be. The things that we had booked whilst we were there, like the meals, the meet and greets, the fast passes, everything, the hotel, it was all perfect, exactly how I wanted it, would have wanted my first Disney holiday to be and I was so excited, it didn't feel real but I, it was starting to sink in as it was getting closer and then we found out about, you know, coronavirus and we were like, oh, it'll, it'll have, you know, calmed down by then and we'll be, we'll be fine. July's a, a long time away, but I look at it now and I'm like, I don't even feel like I'd be able to go this July. Nobody could have even guessed it was going to spiral into something like this. You know, we tried to keep positive and just think, you know, it could still happen. That's, that's still quite a few months away, you know. And of course we had to cancel that and we did get the full refund luckily. There was the option of just rebooking for another time but we just didn't know when it was going to be safe and it just wasn't worth doing that. We're like, just get the money back and book it again for another time when we know it's safe. Which, again, I'll go into a bit later on in the video as to why that won't be happening as planned. It's something that's, you know, not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things again. The same with a lot of things that have happened, like it's only small things compared to what the people are going through and what's happened overall, but everyone, you know, has their own struggles and things are going to be difficult for people to deal with regardless of what they are. So don't ever feel like your struggles are not as important because they are. But yeah, that was really, really hot. The lead up to like not knowing if it was gonna happen or not in July. It was awful because I was just like, this is what's getting me through everything. It was like the one thing I knew I had this year, like last year to keep me going. Then I was like, I'm not even enjoying the lead up anymore because every day it gets closer, I should be getting more excited and planning things, but it just felt like, what's the point? We still booked fast passes and stuff on the day that we were meant to, even though we were kind of like, I don't think this is happening, but it's a good practice, you know, cause it's kind of a stressful day and we got everything we wanted which was really annoying. Again, probably because a lot of people weren't booking fast passes 
because they knew they weren't going or a lot of people had cancelled but we managed to get everything we wanted literally this holiday was perfect in every way <laughs> and then obviously it didn't happen but i'm sure one day i will get there maybe i don't know i hope so i've spent a long time talking about that so let's move on then next i want to talk about september because september was by far the best month of the whole year there were some not so great things that happened in september september in general for one specific reason was the best month of the year by far and it's i'm so glad that it happened it's given me something really amazing to look at over 2020 obviously there were some little highlights and stuff but this is such a standout moment for my life in general this is going to sound really dramatic but for my life in general it's a standout moment and the fact that it happened within such an awful year is amazing because it brings something so great out of that year again something you will have seen me talk about a lot on my social media you probably know what i'm going to say at alton towers i was chosen to be one of the performers to be involved in oktoberfest it was their first ever oktoberfest they had some food stands out they had entertainment which of course is what i was a part of and oh wow guys i i don't want to cry um this job anyway when i got this job in september of 2019 from that moment it has always been an absolute dream job like i've loved every single minute of it i was already just living my absolute best life then i got this opportunity and i was like how is this happening to me i've spoken about like dream jobs before and stuff but i've always said that like working somewhere like that as a performer at a theme park or a resort has always been a big dream of mine when i was younger i used to want to work at places like butlins like holiday parks and stuff or theme parks i literally have got my dream job and this specifically performing on the big stage right in front of the towers every single day that octoberfest was happening just the whole time i just kept looking around and i was just like as if this is happening this is everything little me wanted and I used to look at the people that were doing this kind of thing when I was younger and be like, wow, wouldn't it be amazing to do that? Oh, that's like the dream. And uh, I, I did it. And I, that's all I could think about the whole time. And it just made it so much more special. And yeah, performing on that stage was just incredible. And working with the amazing people I got to work with, it's just an absolute dream. And I had the best time and I could talk about it forever but I won't go too much into it especially because I feel like I'm gonna sob that was something that saved 2020 for me something that I'm so grateful came out of that year and I cannot believe we got to do that and we got to do it safely and that it all worked out so well we were so lucky with the weather as well we had a few days of really bad rain and stuff but for the most part it was really nice weather as someone who's doubted themselves for like their whole life and thought that all of my little goals that I had were just, you know, so far out of reach. People like me don't get to do things like that. And it happened. It's just, yeah. <sighs> wow. The best experience I've ever had. And I'm so grateful for it. And I know this is so cheesy, but it's true. Like I said, September had some of its lower moments and not so great things happen. Like I was saying about the whole Disney holiday thing, why it's not going to happen the way we expected. Uh, basically, obviously, I went through a breakup and that was a whole thing uh so that was something i was having to deal with alongside doing oktoberfest the fact that i had oktoberfest to keep me going was obviously amazing and you know that was a good way of distracting myself you know um but yeah that was something that i went through and again something i never expected to come from 2020 then october we had scarefest which was amazing as well loved that i got to work in cbb's land again and cbb's land hotel it was lovely it was so nice again just being at work i just love it <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll never stop talking about how much i flipping love this job scarefest managed to happen so lucky that we managed to do that as well but then obviously straight after scarefest is where we had to close again and lockdown 2.0 happened who'd have thought we'd even have one lockdown we had two and now we're in the midst of a third what is going on something it's quite a big thing it's not a big thing but it's something worth mentioning that happened this year i keep saying this year last year i dyed my hair i was going through things and apparently i wanted to dye my hair i mean i didn't do it myself i went and got it done but I first got it done and I was like, oh my God, what the hell have I done? I'm not blonde anymore. I've always been blonde. Blonde is me, you know. 
but I've got used to it now and I do like it. But yeah, I just fancied a bit of a change. My hair's always looked the same other than when I had my fringe cut and it had it a bit short for a while. But I've always had blonde hair. Never dyed it another colour, only ever had like a few highlights in it. So I was like, you know what, let's mix it up. And I thought for winter it would be nice. And I love it and a lot of people have said they really like it, so that's good. Yeah, I have brown hair now. It's really weird. I don't know if it'll... I'll leave it like this forever or if I'll ever go back to blonde again, who knows? But, you know, just something worth mentioning because, you know, again, not a massive thing that happened, but it's something that happened. And for someone who doesn't really like change and never dyed a hair before, it's a change. So yeah, November was just being stuck in lockdown again. December happened and I got to go to work over Christmas leading up to Christmas anyway. My last day was the 23rd. I was working in CBeebies land for the lead up to Christmas and it was lovely. We had a secret Santa. It was great being with those guys on the lead up to Christmas. A great way to finish off the year. When we went back into lockdown in November, I was starting to prepare myself for the fact that I may not be going back again for the rest of the year. But we did get to go back for a little while. And then Christmas happened. Obviously, Boris decided to change the rules a few days leading up to Christmas, which was great. But I got to see my sister and her boyfriend on Christmas, which was amazing. And of course, I live with my mum and dad anyway. Didn't get to see Anna. Like I said, I haven't seen her since last January because she went into tier four before Christmas. So obviously the whole getting to be with us for a day rule didn't apply for her, which is awful. And it's, again, I'm not going to talk about it too much because I'll get upset, but it's that's one thing that 2020 has really taken away from me, seeing one of my sisters. But again, looking at the positives, I'm very lucky that I got to spend it with most of my immediate family. Like my heart genuinely aches for people that had to spend Christmas alone or not with family. I'm so sorry if that was you. And I feel bad even just talking about the fact that I spent Christmas with family. Hopefully this year, this Christmas will be a lot different. We just got to keep positive and just stay hopeful. Another thing that happened this year during the first lockdown, was it during the first lockdown? Yeah, it was. So already this year, I was really struggling. And then we sadly lost one of our beloved rabbits. We lost Judy Hops very suddenly. It was horrendous. That day was awful. Hearing my mom's panic and being like, what the hell's going on? And then finding out she'd just gone and it was, literally out of nowhere she was so young we'd not even had her that long and just like that she was gone and again people may look at that and be like it's a rabbit chill but pets aren't just pets they're like your family it's the same for any pet really so yeah i was absolutely devastated and with everything going on this year i was like that is the last straw and i was just honestly that day i was absolutely beside myself we lost a really close family friend this year as well and she was suffering with cancer and she was getting really poorly and we couldn't go and see her. I already hadn't seen her for a long time and then she passed away in 2020 so I've just got it and kind of been trying not to think about it too much. Although we didn't lose her to Covid, we lost her and it was really difficult to deal with. Yeah, it's been just an awful, awful year for the most part. Aside from all the awful things that happened this year, there were some great things to come out of it too. Like the moments I've spoken about already and also reconnecting with some old friends. My school friends when we hadn't really spent time together or seen each other for such a long time. Our lives always cross like everything clashed. Some of us would be at work while others would be back at home. Some of them were living away and like it just never worked like we hardly ever got to see each other and it was hard to you know keep contact. We were all leading completely different lives. Everyone's so busy but then we did some more Zoom calls. We were like, you know what, let's do a Zoom call. And we ended up doing quite a few. And that is one thing I'm really grateful that 2020 brought me is reconnecting with some old friends because that is something I definitely needed this year. And it was just so nice. They're the kind of friends that you can go without speaking to or seeing for so long. And then when you do speak again, it's like the same as it always was and nothing's changed, which is amazing. Like the last couple of days of the year, I went for a walk with some of my old friends, which was lovely. And then on the last day of the year, I went for a walk with my best friend, Sophie, who has been my friend since school. And we just had a big catch up. And it was, again, it's just been so nice. And I think obviously if 2020 had been more normal, that probably wouldn't have happened because we would have all been so busy as usual. So it's, again, you've got to look at those little positives and that's what gets you through. See, connecting with old friends has just been 
something I'm very grateful for. And just my friends in general this year, like things have changed, people have come and gone out of my life that I never thought would, which has been weird to deal with. Again, some of the people that have really helped me through this year, some of my work friends, like some of them have no idea the kind of impact they've had on my life. They've literally like saved my year. Some of them I've told them this, some of them I haven't, but yeah, a lot of my work friends have literally saved me this year, like have gotten me through so much and constantly checking on me and you know, have our chats, you know who you are. So thank you to any of you who are watching. Really got me through, even when I've not been at work, just speaking to you guys has been amazing and I'm very grateful for you all. Something else really random that happened this year but was really fun <laughs> and absolutely hilarious. Discovered Twitch. I knew it existed but I never really used it. <laughs> You're gonna be like what? Where is this going? I discovered Twitch streaming. I kind of loved it for a little while but never really delved into it but I really like watching gaming videos on YouTube and stuff and it's like a comfort thing for me. I love watching people play games. I love playing games myself, but especially watching people play games. I've literally got a video pause right now, which I'm going to explain who it is in a minute. And they have been like my number one YouTuber of the year. But anyway, I really enjoy watching gaming videos. I know it's really random and it's something you probably wouldn't expect from me. I don't know. Maybe you would. I don't know. I ended up watching some of Joe Sugg's Twitch streams. Someone gifted me a sub. This probably won't make sense if you've not used Twitch before, but basically you get access to some people can like pay to gift random people that are watching a subscription which means you get access to like a discord chat like a separate chat and other little highlights so basically joe sorg wanted to play mario kart with some of his subscribers so he put a code in the subscribers chat and like you just had to you know first come first serve and i managed to get on and i played mario kart with joe sorg and if you know me You'll have known for a while that I have loved Joe Sook. He's one of my favourite people ever. <laughs> I absolutely adore him. I've met him a few times. And I played Mario Kart with him. And it was really, really cool. And I know this is such a random specific thing. But I just thought about it the other day. And I was like, I feel like I need to talk about that in the video. Because that's been a highlight of 2020. Because that was so cool. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. Because that was amazing. Gaming videos and stuff have been like a comfort thing for me this year which leads me on to some of the top things top favorites of the year maybe like top youtubers top games things that have like smaller things like that that have been my favorites this year like i was talking about the gaming video side of things how much i love those that leads me on to my number one youtuber of the year the person i have that has saved my 2020 honestly they have saved my 2020 especially during the second lockdown and even now, but that's where it started, I was binge watching them. I'd already watched them a bit throughout the year, but especially that second lockdown. Anyway, I've been watching Jacksepticeye. He's been going for a long time. I've known of him for a long time. I just never watched him. I don't know why, I just hadn't. And then I was watching, I can't remember what the first video was that I watched of his, but it, I think he came up as a suggested one. I'd been watching a couple of gaming videos, probably Joe's or something. And I clicked on one of his and I ended up watching and then it just spiralled and I've just been binge watching so many of his old videos and obviously watching his new ones as he's uploaded them. It's so random and he, you know, plays games, uploads them to YouTube and it's literally been an absolute comfort thing for me to watch. Like almost every single day I've been watching so many of his videos just because it's been my comfort. It's like my comfort videos to watch and... It's a good distraction for me, he makes me laugh, I really enjoy watching him play these games. Jacksepticeye single-handedly saved my 2020. What can I say? <laughs> He's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I love him, I, oh, I absolutely adore him. And I know I'm so late on the bandwagon, most people who watch him have been watching him for years. 2020 was the year that I started watching him properly and I flipping love him. He, his videos have got me through a lot which I know always sounds really dramatic, but with how I've been doing this year and the things that I've gone through like mentally, he has been the best distraction for me and it's really helped me a lot. So yeah, flipping love him. A series that I've loved this year, I keep saying this year, a series that I've loved in 2020, which I haven't finished yet, but I started watching from the beginning. I've kind of dragged it out a lot throughout the year. That's why I've not got through it all. But How I Met Your Mother, again, 
that's an old show. It's been going on for a while. <laughs> I started watching it. I'd seen random episodes here and there, but not properly. So I started watching that and I just love it. Again, it's a nice, easy watch. It's a nice comfort thing to watch. It's funny. I love it. So that's something that I thought I'd mention because that's been like the main show of 2020 that I've loved. Also, Modern Family. My sister and her boyfriend watched that a lot. And during, I think it was the first lockdown, she was like, you, mom, you and mom and dad need to watch this. You guys would absolutely love this. And now it's become like a thing that we do. Every night when we have our dinner, we put an episode of Modern Family on and then we play, <laughs> and then we play Mario Kart Wii because my mum and dad are obsessed with it now as well. Uh, my mum would never play it with me and my dad. We'd occasionally play it and my mum was like, no, it's not my thing. But lockdown changed her and now she loves it and we play it like almost every night and it's the cutest and most ridiculous thing ever. So that is our evening routine. <laughs> we have our dinner and watch an episode of Modern Family and then play some Mario Kart. It's great. But yeah, Modern Family is brilliant. Oh my god, incredible. I'm so glad I discovered that in 2020 as well. Also, of course, Disney Plus came out in 2020, which has been a saviour. Watched a few things on there. I watched High School Musical, the musical, the series. Such a mouthful. Um, I actually watched Soul a few days ago. Doesn't count for 2020 because I watched it in 2021, but just thought I'd mention it. Absolutely incredible. But of course, that was a brilliant thing to come out of 2020. They timed that very well. I've been loving watching that. I haven't watched it as much as I thought I would because I've just been distracted by a lot of YouTube as well. But I have still watched it a lot and I started watching some more of the Marvel films and re-watching Disney films from like the start, like going through an order. I've started doing that. Also the stuff like the behind the scenes stuff about like the parks and stuff. I can't remember what, what it was called. The one, the one of the first things I watched on there. And it was each episode was about different oh my god what the hell was that maybe you'll know what it is but some of them are kind of similar but it was about the parks like i said i've been enjoying playing games this year and i got my switch which has been a savior animal crossing new horizons thank you thank you for saving 2020 also i played animal crossing let's go to the city and animal crossing wild world i was like what the hell is it called the ds and the wii i used to play on that a lot when i was younger i loved animal crossing then as well and then animal crossing new horizons came out for the switch and i didn't have a switch and i was really jealous and i was desperate to play it ended up buying myself a switch with my some of my birthday money and just just to treat myself after the after how i was feeling i was like you know i'm just gonna bite the bullet and do it and animal crossing new horizons is bloody incredible like they're all good but this one, obviously there's so much more you can do now. It's amazing and it's been a brilliant distraction. I have spent many hours on it and I'm still going. I'm still obsessed with it. I know people often go through phases where they get a bit bored of it because they've kind of done everything they wanted to do. But I'm still in the process of still wanting to like change up parts of my island. I just love it. It's brilliant. Another game that I saw Joe play for the first time. Joe Sug. Um, I realised I just said Joe and you're like, who's Joe? You probably knew I meant Joe Sug. Anyway. Again, discovered his Twitch streams, and this was the first one of his Twitch streams I watched, was him playing Hello Neighbor. I had no clue what this game was. I loved watching him play it, and I was like, this is so cool. And I ended up getting it on my Switch, and I became obsessed with it. It's such a random game, and again, it came out a long time ago, but I've loved it. It's so good. I've spent so much time on this game. I don't know. It's just so fun. It's quite a stressful game as well at times, but it is great. Animal Crossing and Hello Neighbor are like my two games of the year probably. I was going to talk about like a film of the year. I know not long before lockdown I went to see Onward at the cinema which was amazing. It was such a good film. I've kind of forgotten a lot of it because it's been a while since I watched it so I need to re-watch that now it's on Disney Plus. I still haven't watched the new Mulan either so I need to watch that. I feel like I'm going to end up editing this back or uploading it and being like oh my god this film why didn't I talk about that? But oh god I feel like this year has been a blur. Obviously I haven't been to see many films in the cinema or anything so anything that I've watched that's new has been at home randomly so i'm like i can't remember a franchise that i need to talk about this year because of all the things this has been the one thing that has got me through <laughs> oh my god it's just hilarious that i've rediscovered my love for it and it's escalated times a billion trust me i'm more obsessed than i've ever been in my life harry freaking potter oh my god i've loved harry potter since i was little i always used to watch it with family i loved it you know it's great. I've always liked it. 2020, of course, had a lot more free time. Discovered TikTok properly. I kind of started watching it at the end of 2019, but 
I got more into watching TikToks and if you watch TikTok you'll know what's coming. <laughs> Harry Potter TikTok appeared, Draco Talk, Weasley TikTok. It's all just kicked off in 2020 and I'm honestly gonna say it's saved the year. <laughs> it's basically helped me rediscover my love for Harry Potter and now I'm older I feel like I appreciate it so much more. There's obviously more that I understand from when I was younger and I just love it and I've grown my obsession back again like I said times a million honestly next level I'm a, a, I've just obsessed with it I've always loved it but now I love it more than I've ever loved it before and I've just gotten into this hole of watching them again I've finally started reading the books because I asked for them for Christmas I just never got around to reading the books I finally started book one so glad that I'm getting to read them for the first time because I know that's something that everyone wants to do is to be able to read those books again for the first time because you can reread them but there's nothing like the first time reading them and I'm really excited about that oh honestly I don't even know Harry Potter has just saved this year it's ridiculous I know but it's been one of my best distractions and now my obsession for it has grown my obsession for Fred Weasley has reached another level I just oh god it's brilliant and I know a lot of people can say the same about it because it's happening to a lot of people especially people who like grew up with it it's really nice to have gained this love for it back I never stopped loving it but this like full-on obsession that I'm kind of going through like the amount of Harry Potter stuff I got for Christmas because I was like what do I want for Christmas Harry Potter all the Harry Potter because I love Harry Potter it's the best thing in the world which you know it kind of is if you could see right above where this cuts off my uh, Harry Potter 2021 calendar is up on the wall my obsession with Harry Potter has grown some could say to an unhealthy level if you're going to be obsessed with something being obsessed with a series of books or films is pretty good yeah some people are obsessed with heroin it's even to a point where I bought this candle because people on TikTok said it smelled what they thought Draco Malfoy would smell like <laughs> I'm insane but this smells great <laughs> my lock screen would you like to see my lock screen? I'm about to expose myself right now. Can you see that? I'm not even sorry. I'm not even sorry. There's some of the main things I wanted to talk about that happened in 2020. Now just overall feelings, you know, it's been a weird one. <laughs> Mentally, to be completely honest with you, I have not coped with the situation well at all. Is that even possible for people to cope well with this situation? I feel like everyone struggled because it's something we never thought would happen. It's something we've not had to go through. It's weird, it's unusual and it's difficult and it's a big change. Whether that's just the whole having to be locked inside for a while, whether you've had people you know go through Covid and ha had to battle it, maybe a lot of people have lost loved ones to covid no matter what your specific experience is it's been difficult for everyone but mentally i have really struggled although i am quite an introvert and i like my own company i like sitting in my room and watching youtube videos and playing on my switch and you know cracking on with whatever i want to crack on with i'm feeling lonely feeling stressed that this is never going to end i just want normal life back i've obviously lost people that i thought i'd never lose and it's been weird and i just oh it's mentally this has been the hardest I've ever struggled if I don't know if I'm wording this right I was thinking of maybe doing a whole video about my mental health because obviously I made an anxiety video years ago that really helped me and a lot of other people so maybe if I talk more about some of the other things I haven't spoken about but I still find it hard because honestly it's I find it really difficult to explain how I'm feeling because I don't know and everything that's going on my on in my brain is just an absolute mess but I just this year just stopped feeling like myself the most myself I felt was when I did Oktoberfest because I was doing the, my absolute dream thing that I've always wanted to do it's literally in my element but other than that really it's been hard to feel like myself and it's been really weird out of it a lot of the time and like since a bit of a blur I felt very very low as you can see from this video I've clearly been doing a lot of things and watching and listening to whatever a lot of things to try and keep me distracted because I've really been struggling this year and I've had to find things to keep me going and whether that's been my friends that have been really great to me and that I've had a lot of chats with whether that's been silly little YouTube videos that I've been watching or watching a Harry Potter film 
it's all of these little things that are helping not think about everything that's going on in the world and taking me away from it for a little while just getting me through each day 2020 has been all about taking things day by day because we didn't no one knows what's coming no one knows what's going to happen and that is all we can do really so finding those little distractions throughout the year has really helped me a lot i've really struggled i've been the lowest i've ever been and i won't go into it too much right now but basically when it got to the got to new year's eve and new year's day did the countdown i was just a bit overwhelmed because it just baffles me that i've made it to the end of the year that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> like i didn't know if i would i'm still trying to come to terms with how i've been feeling and how my mental health has deteriorated my plan for 2021 is to try even harder to pluck up the courage to get help and speak to a therapist which is something i'm finding really difficult i've had experiences with therapists in the past most of them not great but that doesn't mean that they're all going to be like that it's just finding the right person for you but i just find it hard to take that step for a lot of things i find it easiest to talk about things like that on camera like in my youtube videos which is weird because more people are going to see it in a youtube video than if i was just to talk to a therapist about it but for some reason i find this easier because i think because i'm just talking to a camera and i'm not saying it directly to people maybe that's why i don't know but i find it hard to get help and i know that can be confusing and not make sense that i find it easier to talk about it on camera it's one of those things but i have done a lot better at talking about it to close friends about how i've really been feeling and they've helped me through a lot there's a few friends in particular that have literally pulled me through this year and really helped me out which i'm so grateful for yeah i'm not going to go into it too much because i don't even know where to start and i find it hard to talk about not only because you know it's a difficult subject in general but also just because i don't even know how this is what i mean like it's just this i don't know what's going on in here so it's hard to say it out loud because i don't know it's weird so yeah especially over the last couple of months probably it's been the worst and it's scary like it was quite scary to me i hate the pressure of a new year as well because there's this pressure of when january 1st hits that's it you're, new, you're a new person you've got to have your life in place you've got to start planning things more you've got you know your schedule of what you're gonna do you've got your new year's resolutions 2021's gonna be my year 2021's gonna be ch a change for me i'm gonna do this this year things don't just change like that because it's the start of a new year it's just another day as well if you can change things around for the better drastically on january the first and that's amazing but for a lot of people that isn't realistic and that's not realistic for me. We're only six days into the new year and I'm st I've am i still had my really low moments and I'm still struggling just as much as I was last week. Just because it's a new year it doesn't mean that it's easy for me to switch out of that. That's a goal of mine for this year is to get better with it but I, you know it doesn't happen overnight. I don't have new year's resolutions because I mean I don't know what's going to happen this year. Resolutions I make this year are going to even be possible but something I want to do is it sounds cliche but it's something that i need to do is to focus on myself listen to what my mind and my body want from me and you know do it you know if i need to take a break if i need to relax do it if i need to switch off you know if i need to go out and get some air do it i've got i need to take care of myself this year just obviously with everything that's been going on it's time to focus on myself a bit more and try and better myself as much as i can and that also involves me working on my mental health to look into getting therapy which i have looked into but it's it's so difficult I, I wish i could explain it it's weird that i find it so hard maybe that's something i'll be able to do this year but who knows i'm just gonna take each day as it comes and try my best just try and enjoy things as much as i possibly can there's probably so much more i could talk about there's probably things that i should have said that i forgot about that's why some of this is in a bit of a random order because i remember to talk about things that i'd forgotten to mention earlier on in the video or whatever overall 2020 has been a weird one it's been pretty awful for the most part but like i said you've got to look at some of those positives even if there's only very small positive things that happened to you in 2020 maybe that you started a new hobby but also that was something that I found a lot of pressure because a lot of people were starting new hobbies and stuff in lockdown and starting running or starting painting and I, I did I delved into a bit of painting or like new hobbies and stuff but I found it hard to keep things like that up. I really struggled with motivation. 
I'd feel guilty that I'd done nothing all day but I couldn't bring myself to do a lot like I found it difficult especially over the last couple of months like I said like I find it difficult to even just get out of bed most mornings like this morning was an achievement for me because I got up not long after I woke up and got myself ready to film a video and that's something very small when many people look at it but for me that was a big achievement because I'm I am at that point now where I'm struggling to even get out of bed most mornings and that's me being very honest with you even if it's just a small thing that was a highlight for you this year there's always one thing at least one thing you'll probably find if you look at the tiniest things you'll think of more and you'll be like oh yeah and that was only a little thing but that was great you have to make the most of the little things especially in 2020 so anyway i could go on forever and i kind of already have this video is already very long but i knew that was going to be the case it was a chatty video about the year i nearly didn't film this but i'm glad i've done it now and now I've got to sit through and edit it all, which will probably take a while. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did, I guess. <laughs> Comment down below your highlight of 2020. And like I said, you'll definitely be able to find one, even if it's small, even if it's, I managed to get up an hour earlier than usual. I discovered my love for Harry Potter again. Maybe that's your highlight of the year. That's a highlight for me, you know. Let's not talk about the negatives. Let's talk about the positives. We've just got to take this year as it goes and see what happens because who knows what's going to happen. Are things going to be back to normal before the end of the year? Who knows? I guess we'll find out. Another thing, you normally see that I upload a highlights video each year. So like clips from vlogs and stuff like of the best moments of the year. Haven't done that this year for obvious reasons. Haven't filmed a lot. I'm very grateful for those of you that have stuck with me on my channel because obviously I've flopped a bit with it this year, especially. I mean, I've never been amazingly consistent with it, but Vlogmas, I did I did pretty well at. I'm pretty proud of how well I did at Vlogmas, even though they were very samey vlogs because I wasn't doing a lot. Like, I kept it up and I'm very proud of that. Like, I kept it up for so long. Thank you for sticking with me on YouTube. Hopefully this year there'll be more content, I hope. It's just hard to find the motivation to do a lot of things at the moment with how my brain's going. But yeah, you haven't seen a highlight for this year. Highlight's real. If, if I were to do one, it would probably just be a few random clips here and there that I've managed to get. And just a lot of clips from Oktoberfest from other people's vlogs on YouTube. <laughs> That'd probably be it. So I'll save you that and just talk to you about the year instead. So that's it. Subscribe if you haven't already for hopefully some more content this year. I'm going to try my best. Hopefully I can get some more out for you. I'm going to see what happens. I really want to. I really love doing this. I just, you know, with everything going on in my brain, I find it hard to do a lot of things, even things that I love. Thank you for sticking with me through 2020 and through this video that's been about five hours long. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.